afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are the Cube covering AWS reInvent for the 10th year in a row. John Furrier, you've been here for all 10. How does this one stack up? It's feeling great. It's just back into the saddle of more people. Everyone's getting bigger and growing up. The companies that were originally on are getting stronger, bigger. They're doing takeovers in restaurants. And still new players are coming in. More startups are coming in and taking care of what I call the eight months on classic, all the primitives. And then you start to see a lot more ecosystem platform building on top of ADAS. I call that next-gen cloud, next-gen ADAS. It's happening, it's happening right now. Best thing about all of these startups is they grow up, they mature, and we stay the same age, John. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Very so. excited to introduce to you our next guest. He wears a lot of hats as the CEO, founder, and chairman at Aureltio. Please welcome Manesh. Manesh, welcome to the show. How, how is your show going so far? Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this is amazing. Uh, just the energy, the number of people. You know, I was here last year just after the pandemic and uh, I think it's almost double, if not more, the number of people this year. Pushing 50,000. Yeah. The high water mark was 65,000 in 2019. We should be doing like it's, a Price is Right sort of back. thing here on the show and figure yeah. out. One dollar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One guest, 80,000 guests. How many guests are here? Just in case the audience is not familiar, we know you're a fast growing, very exciting business. Tell us what Realtio does. So Realtio is a SaaS platform for data unification. And uh, we started Realtio in 2011. Uh, we have been serving some of the largest customers across industries like uh, life sciences, healthcare, financial services, insurance, um, high tech and retail. Uh, those are you know, some of the areas that we are focused uh, on. Uh, the product capabilities are horizontal because we see the same data problem across every industry. Highly fragmented, highly siloed data that is slowing down the business for every organization out there. And uh, that's the problem that we are solving. We are uh, breaking down these silos, uh, you know, one profile or one record or one uh, customer, product, supplier uh, information record at a time and uh, bringing the acceleration of this unified data to every organization. This is the show's theme this year. Adam Celeste is going to be on stage talking about data end-to-end. -end. Okay, integrating in all aspects of a company. The word data analyst probably goes away pretty shortly. Everyone was going to be using data. This has been, and he talks about horizontal and vertical use cases. We've been saying that in theCUBE. I think it was about seven years ago we first said we're going to start to see horizontally scalable data not just compute and, and cloud. This is now prime time conversation. Making that all work with governance is a real hard problem. Understanding the data. Companies have to put this horizontal and vertical capabilities in place together. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the data problem may be a horizontal problem, but uh, every industry or vertical that you go into adds its own nuance or flavor to it. And that's why uh, you know, this has to be a combination of the horizontal and vertical. And we at Reltio thought about this for a while where you know, every time we enter a conversation, we're talking about patient data, or physician data, or client data in financial services, or policy and uh, customer information in insurance. But every time, it's the number of silos that we encounter. That is just an increasing number of applications, increasing number of third party data sources, and bringing that together in a manner where you can understand the semantics of it. Because you know, every, every record is not created equal, every piece of information is not created equal, but at the same time you have to stitch it together in order to create that holistic, you know, the so-called 360 degree view yeah. Because without that, the types of problems that you're trying to solve are not possible, right? It's not possible to make those breakthroughs. And that's where I think uh, the Absolutely. problem may be horizontal, but uh, the application of the yeah. capabilities has to be verticalized. I'm smiling because, um, you know, when you're a founder like you are and, uh, and, and Dave Vellante are here at theCUBE, you're often misunderstood before people figure out what you do and why you started the company. And I can imagine, and knowing you and covering your company, that this is not just yesterday you came up with this idea that now everyone's talking about. 
there was probably moments in your history when you started, you're scratching that, hey, the future's going to be this, horizontal and vertical, especially where machine learning needs to know the data, the linguistics, whatever the data is, it's got to be very particular for the vertical, but you need to expand yep. it. So when did you uh, have the moment where people finally figured out like what you guys doing is like, uh, Relevant. <laughs> I mean, now the whole world yeah, yeah. now sees. Overnight success, 11 years well, I mean, later. No, I mean, yeah, no, yeah. This show is the first time I've heard Amazon and the industry generally agree that horizontally scalable data systems with vertical value that yeah, is, is natural. Point. We've been saying it for point. seven years in the queue. We've been, you've been doing the startup. Yeah. As a founder, you were there early. Now people are getting it. What's it like? Tell, take us through what's it. When did you have the moment? When did you, tipping point for the world getting it? Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, the, the key thing to remember is that, uh, uh, you know, not only have I been in this space for a long time, but uh, the experiences that we have gone through, uh, starting in 2011, there was a lot of focus on, you know, even AWS was at that point in time in the infancy stages, yeah. and we said that we are going to set up a software as a service capability that runs only on public cloud, uh, because we had seen what customers had tried to do behind their firewalls and the types of hurdles that they had run into before. And while, while the concept was still in its nascent stages, but the directional signals, the fact that number of applications that you see in use today across any organization, that's growing. It used to be a case when in early 2000s, you know, this is early part of my career, where having six different applications across the enterprise landscape was considered complex. But now those same organizations are talking about 400, 500, 1,000 different applications that they're using to run their business end to end. So you know, this direction was clear, the need for digital transformation was becoming clear, and the fact that you know, cloud was the only vehicle that you could use to solve these types of at scale problems was also becoming clear. But what wasn't yet mainstream was this notion that you know, if you're doing digital transformation, you need access to clean, consistent, trusted, trusted information. Or if you're doing machine learning or any kind of data analytics, you need similar kinds of trusted information. It wasn't a mainstream concept, but people were struggling with it because you know, the, the whole notion of garbage in, garbage out was becoming clearer to them as they started running into hurdles. And it's great to see that now, you know, after having gone through the transformation of, yeah. yes, we have provided the compute and the storage, but now we ne really need to unlock the value out of data that goes on this compute and storage. Yeah. You know, it's great to see that it's, even Amazon or AWS yeah. is talking about Well, as a founder, it's satisfying, and congratulations, we've been covering that. I got to ask, you mentioned this end-to-end. -end. I like the example of in the 2006 applications considered complex, now hundreds and thousands of workloads are on an enterprise. Today, we're going to hear more end-to-end -end data services on AWS and off AWS, hybrid or edge or whatever. That's happens now cross. It sounds like it's going to get more complex still. I mean. Right, I mean, <laughs> th that's not easy. The gentle understatement of the century. Like, so, I love so, that, John, <laughs> yes. If, if Adam's message is end-to-end, -end, it's going to be more complex. How does it get easier? Because the enterprise, you know the enterprise vendors love at solving complexity with more complexity. That's well, the wrong answer. You, you're, you're absolutely right that things are going to get more complex, but you know, this is where, whether it is uh, Amazon or you know, us, Reltio, as a vendor coming in, the goal should always be what are we going to simplify for the customer because they are going to end up with a complex landscape on their hands anyway. Right. right? So that is where what can be below the surface and simplified for the customers to use versus bringing their focus to the business value that they can get out of, it, uh, out of it. Unlocking that business value has to be the key aspect that we have to bring to the front. And you know, that is where, yes, the landscape complexity may grow, but how is the solution making it simpler, easier, faster for you to get value out of the data that you're trying to work with? As a mission that seems very clear and clean cut, but I'm curious, I can imagine there's so many different things that you're prioritizing when you're thinking about how to solve those problems. What is that decision matrix like for you? For us, uh, it goes back to the core focus and the core problem that we are in the business of solving, which is in a siloed, fragmented landscape, how can we create a single source of truth orientation that your business can depend on? If you're looking for 
the unified view of the customer, the product, the supplier, the location, the asset, all these are elements that are critical or crucial for you to run your business end to end, and we are there to provide that solution as Reltio to our customers. So, you know, we always, for our decision matrix, have to go back to, are we simplifying that problem for our customers? And how much faster, easier, nimbler can it be, you know, both as a solution and also the time to value that it brings to the equation for Super the customers. Super important end of the equation. Clearly, you are on to something. You are not only a unicorn company, Unicorn company being valued at over $1 billion. Latest valuation, correct me if I'm wrong, is $1.7 billion as of last year. But you are also a centaur, which is seven times more rare than a unicorn, which for the audience maybe not familiar with the mythical creatures that define the Silicon <laughs> Valley nomenclature and lexicon. A, a centaur is a company with $100 million in annual reoccurring revenue. How does it feel to be able to say that as a CEO? or to hear me say that to you? Well, as a CEO, it's uh, you know, something that we have been working towards, uh, the, the goal that we can deliver value to our customers, help every industry. You, know, you, you just think about the, the types of products that you touch in a day, whether it's uh, you know, any, any healthcare related products that you're looking at, we are working with customers who are solving for the patient record to be unified with our platform. We are working with financial services companies who are helping you simplify how you do banking with them. We are working with retailers who are working in the area of uh, you know, leisure apparel or athletic goods and they are using our capabilities to simplify how they deliver better experience to you. So as I go across these industries, being able to influence and touch and simplify things overall for the customers that these companies are serving, that's, that's an amazing uh, feeling. And uh, you know, doing this while we are also making sure that we can build a durable business that has substantial revenue behind it, uh, is, gives, gives us, gives us a lot of legs to stand on and talk about how we can change how the companies should uh, run their entire data stack. And you're obviously a very efficient team practicing what you teach. You told me uh, how many employees that you had? We are 450 employees across 450 the globe. 450 employees and 100 million in, in reoccurring revenue. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. Thank that's, you. That's a quarter million in rev per employee. They're doing a pretty good job. That's, that's absolutely The cloud fantastic. has been very successful yeah. partnering with the cloud. A lot of leverage for the cloud. And, and that's been a part of our thesis from the very beginning that uh, you know, the capabilities that we build and bring to life have to be built on public cloud infrastructure. That's, that's something that has been core to our innovation cycle because we look at it as a layer cake of innovation that we sit on and we can continue to drive faster uh, value for our customers. Okay, so Vinish, normally we do a bumper sticker. Tell me the bumper sticker for the show. We changed it to kind of modernize it. It's called the Insta Challenge. It's a great challenge. Instagram has reels, short videos. What's the Instagram reel from your perspective? You had to do an Instagram reel right now about why this time in history, this time in for Amazon Web Services, this point for Reltio, why is this moment in time important in the computer industry because you know, we've reported, I put a story out, Next Gen Cloud's here. Um, people are seeing their, their status go from ISV to ecosystem platforms on top of AWS. Your success has continued to grow. Something's going on. What's the Instagram reel about why this year is so important in the history of the of cloud? Well, um, you know, just think about the, the overall macroeconomic conditions, uh, you know, everybody's trying to think about where the next uh, you know, the set of growth is going to come from or how we are going to tackle you know, what we have as challenges in front of us. And at the end of the day, most of the efficiency that came from applying new applications or you know, buying new products uh, in the application space has delivered its value. The next, the next unlock is going to come from data. And that is the, the key that we have to think about because the, the traditional model of going across 500 different applications to run your business is no longer going to be a scalable model to work with. If you really want to move faster with your business, you have to think about how to use data as the strategic asset and think about things differently. 
and we're talking about delivering experience at the edge, delivering uh, you know, real-time type of engagement with the customers that we work with, and that is where the entire data value proposition starts to deliver a whole new set of options to the customers, and that's something that we all have to think about differently. It's going to require a fundamentally different architecture, innovation, leading with data, instead of thinking about the traditional old landscape that we have been running with. Leading with data and transforming architecture, a couple themes we've had on the show lately well, already. Well, I mean, this has been a great, I mean, this is a great leadership example of what's going on in the industry. As young people are looking at their careers, I've talked with um, a lot of folks under 30, they're trying to figure out what's a good career path, and they're looking at all this change in front of them. That's a great point, Whether it's John. a computer science student or someone in healthcare. These industries are being reinvented with data. What's your advice to those young, young that's up and coming generation that might not take the traditional path travel because it might not be there? What's your advice for those people making these career decisions? Um, I think there are two things that are relevant to every career option out there. Um, knowledge and awareness of data and how to apply computing techniques to the data is, is key and relevant. It's, it's the language that we all have to learn and be familiar with. Without that, you know, you'll be missing a key part of your arsenal that you will be required to bring to work but won't have access to if you're not well-versed or familiar with those two areas. So this is, this is lingua franca that we all have to get used to. <laughs> data and computer technology, applied to business or applied, some application or some problem. Applied to business, you know, figuring out how to apply it to deliver business outcomes is the key thing to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, last question for you to wrap us up. It's obviously an exciting, thrilling, vibrant moment here on the show floor. But I'm curious because I can imagine some of your customers, especially given the scale that they're at, I mean, we're talking about some Fortune 100s here. How are you delivering value in this uncertain market? I mean, I know you solved this baseline problem, but I can imagine there's a little bit of frantic energy within your customer base. Yeah. You know, with data, this has been uh, a traditional challenge. Everybody talks about the motherhood and apple pie. If you have better data, you can drive better outcomes. But some of the work that we have been doing is quantifying, measuring those outcomes and translating what the dollar impact of that value is for each one of the customers. And this is where uh, the work that we have done with large, uh, you know, let's say life sciences companies like AstraZeneca or uh, GSK, or in financial services with, the, with companies like uh, Northwestern Mutual or Fidelity, or you know, in, in, in common household names like McDonald's, where they're delivering their digital transformation with the data capabilities that we are helping build with them, uh, that's, the, that's the key part that's been uh, you know, extremely valuable, and that is where in each one of these situations we are helping them measure what the ROI is at every turn. So being able to go into these discussions with the hard dollar ROI that you can expect out of it uh, is, is the key thing that we are focused on. And that's so mission critical now and at any economic juncture. Just to echo that, I noticed that Forrester did an independent study looking at customers that invested in your MDM solution. 366% ROI and a total net present value of 13 million over three years. So you, you clearly deliver on what you just promised there with customers and brands that we touch in all of our everyday lives. Manesh, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. You and Relteo clearly crushing it. We can't wait to have you back, hopefully for some more exciting updates at next year's AWS reInvent. John, thanks or for- Or sooner. Yeah, yeah, or sooner, or maybe in the studios, or who knows, at one of the other fabulous events we'll have. Yeah, I'm sure, you'll, I'm sure you'll be traveling around given the success that the company is seeing. And John, thanks for bringing the young folks into the conversation. Yes. This is a really nice touch. So we got skill gaps, we might as well solve that right now. Yeah, and I like to think that there are young minds watching the Cube, yeah, or at least watching maybe their parents we are, on the Cube. We're streaming to Twitch, all the gamers are watching yeah. this right now. Stop <laughs> playing We have the hottest game. stream on Twitch right now, if you're not already <laughs> ready for it. John Furrier, Manish, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank all of you at home or at the office or in outer space or wherever you happen to be tuned in to this fabulous live stream. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in high tech coverage.
My name is Savannah Peterson. We're at AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas, where we'll have our head in the clouds all week.